Hail, thou blue fire radiance from the heart of God. Hail, thou fount of flame magnificent, feeding the souls of men with the mighty strength of 10,000 angelic beings and causing them to feel reverence for thy cause. For thy cause is ever beneficent. Thy cause is ever the outpouring of thy mercy and thy strength. From the beginning of the cycles, O Lord of the cycles, thou hast extended into the domain of humanity the outpouring of thy strength. Yet thou possesseth not rigidity as men count rigidity for thou art the epitome of all gentility and grace and in thy wondrous outpicturing of divine life there is ever Christ magnificence extended into the domain of the human person whereby that person is transported on the instant into the celestial domains from whence they came. Greetings, precious ones of the light. Understand now that God's compassion for thee is a perfect and beautiful offering. Understand the mighty blue flame fountain of faith is today expanding in the city of San Francisco and causing to be formed here in the atmosphere above this city a mighty blue flame diamond heart. This blue flame diamond heart to convey to those upon the campus at Berkeley the understanding of divine faith that will change mankind's consciousness from hatred into love and from destruction to constructive endeavors whereby the souls of men may feed upon the power of light and light's magnificence rather than all that is destructive and opaque causing their consciousness to go down into the doldrums of human despair. Mankind need today to have an infusion of faith. I speak directly to you. I say to you, you must be still, for I am speaking to many hearts, and I tell you that you must not do these things in this type of meeting, or I shall have to request the karmic board to see that you are removed. You cannot do these things, for I am coming here to assist mankind. Do you understand? I require you to commit yourself that you will be still. You must leave the room unless you will speak to me now. These services, O gracious ones, are to serve many among mankind, and people must understand the need to be quiet and to cause their forlorn bodies to be quiet and calm so that we may infuse this entire room and the city with the radiance of divine faith. No individual ought to cause or create a disturbance at any time. It is not that we do not love every individual. It's simply that mankind have had for too long their own way, and individuals do not understand that while we have compassion without limit for mankind, there is a time to do all things, and now is the time to concentrate upon the power of faith to a dying world. You may say to me today, the world is not dying, but the world is very much alive. I say unto you, with the love of my heart, and the fire of divine faith that the world is dying because it is not actually in contact with the infinite power of God within their own souls. They have reached a point today 
which is almost a point beyond Atlantis at the moment of destruction, we have sounded forth warning after warning to mankind and urged upon them the seriousness of the situation, and yet they have continued in a rampant course toward destruction. What do you think is behind this activity, precious ones? It is an activity designed to destroy men's faith. Every activity today of darkness seems bent upon one purpose, and that is to take away from mankind confidence in the mighty laws of the spiritual side of life. We come then into the atmosphere of the planet this day in order that the beautiful faith of God which we share and enjoy in the ascended octave may come forth and blaze forth through your consciousness by the power of light. I say to my legions of light this day, take your swords of blue flame of thousands of suns from the great central sun and blaze them forth by the power of God not only through this city, but into this nation, and let this nation feel the trembling of faith in the cup of life. The hour has come and the hour is now when the nations must understand that they are not to fight one another and to war with one another, but they are to war upon the destructive powers of pestilence, of disease, of human foment and energy sent out as a destructive activity into the world to turn race against race, creed against creed, and to cause mankind to fight one another when in reality the battle is against ignorance. Let ignorance be banished from the earth and let misunderstanding cease and let the light arise and pulsate into the atmosphere as never before. Won't you please be seated, ladies and gentlemen? I say, let the angels of the diamond heart begin now to fashion a thing of beauty and a joy forever over this city and its environs. Let the minds of the youth that have been turned into courses of destruction Turn now toward the light. Let the pornographic influences that have been spread abroad in this city be halted by the power of the light and let the citizenry arise to cleanse this city from all filth and degradation that has entrenched itself into this city. I say not only is it entrenched here, but it is entrenched in many places throughout this land and it has brought down mankind to a place where they are in many cases lower than the animal creation. Do not be shocked, ladies and gentlemen. Do not be shocked when I tell you the truth for the degradation of mankind today is a frightening thing. If you will gaze at the back of the room, you will see that two doves have now arrived to listen to that which I am speaking. One will be clearly visible to you and the other is behind the window curtain. Take notice then that these doves are also sent here for a reason. For if mankind will not listen, then I tell you that the very stones will cry out. I tell you the very stones will cry out. I tell you that mankind will one day regret the decisions they have made to lavish upon themselves all things which come into their possession and to be ill-concerned with one another. Mankind today are so concerned with their own selfish pursuits that they do not recognize the need to seek to please Almighty God. Ladies and gentlemen, are you aware of the fact that there are those in the psychic realms who would try to make merchandise of my words. They would try to tell you that my words are simple. Yea, I say to you, they are simple, but they are spoken because they are needed, and they are needed to resurrect 
direct in mankind's consciousness awareness of the light that pulsates all around them, which they have ignored not only in this embodiment, but many of them for centuries and centuries of ignorance of the law. Precious ones, we love you more than you can ever understand in your outer self, but our love is not for the preservation of the mortal form, or the mortal concepts which you hold dear, but for the preservation of the eternal spiritual ideals which Almighty God holds dear. And therefore, when we seek to enhance all life by the lovely creations which are released from the angelic host, it is in order to exalt the great pulse of life within your force field to raise your minds from a state of human doubt to a state of human faith to bring about a renaissance within your consciousness of all that is grand and beautiful and noble at inner levels and to see that you shake from the folds of your garments all that substance which is but an accretion of human selfishness and greed. Mankind often do not like to hear these things because they are disturbing. Well, I tell you, ladies and gentlemen, if I disturb you, I will have accomplished my purpose, for I am determined to stir within you this day the regenerate fires of creation that will cause you to seek and pursue the happy road which we do. Ladies and gentlemen, the fire of God that blazes within you is the pulse of Almighty God's love. And if that love is not worthy of your cognizance, then what is? You see, mankind appear as a vapor upon the glass. They are here for a moment and they are gone and their life is snuffed out and they are not anymore in physical form. We are concerned with the form of the spirit. We are concerned with the power of the Lord Mahachohan. We are concerned with the radiance of God that comes as a splendid thing through the heavens and upholds virtue and loveliness and character and nobility and strength and beauty and remembrance of God in the days of thy youth. What do I mean? I reference that all of you are now in the days of your youth. You are now in the days of your youth. You are now in the days of your immaturity. You are not yet formed in the Christ essence. For above you, the Christ essence, the radiant God pattern in the eternal heavens exists as it does above all men. And that light essence is the reality out of which ye will be fashioned as sons of creation. Mankind do not understand the mysteries of God. They dwell in time and in time sequences, and therefore they are drowned in the passing seconds and moments while eternity stands without and within, seeking to dissolve the veil of illusion that confutes temporarily within the domain of their mind the divine elements of cosmic truth and causes them to see with temporal eyes, but to ignore the vision that comes with the fire of God into the spiritual eye of the mind and soul, fashioning that lovely thing that makes men whole, which is the Christ radiance extending hands of love, the grace of God from heaven above, seeking to purify and resurrect, seeking to ennoble man, and by God perfect, all that man does do and hold before his view the essence of the law. Now see how virtue extends itself and observe how the birds remain. As El Moria once quoted, concerning a little boy who gazed out upon a bird and said to his mother, he watches us as we watch him. So is the link with hierarchy. So is the link with heaven. As you watch God and God's manifestation, 
The eye of God is over you. When you do not put your attention, blessed ones, upon God, how can the eye of God be upon you? For God is perfect and pure and lovely and would have you inherit the earth. But the pathway to inheritance of immortal things is always within the domain of the spirit and not within the domain of the temporary. For the temporary must of necessity vanish as a puff of smoke upon the breeze and be no more. But the eternal is that which gives strength to your bones and raises up the fabric of the tent which mankind dwell in. How goodly are thy tents then! as they are sustained by the generative power of Almighty God. What is it, precious ones, that beats and sustains your heart? Is it not the power of the infinite law? And is not that law able also to raise ye up? That law is not only able to raise ye up, it is able to buoy up your faith on wings of light until you no longer have faith in temporary things, but rather have your faith in eternal things and eternal values and in the great God essence of faith. Faith is a gift of God. It is immortal substance. Therefore, I have asked this day that 21 angels from my band will depart that band. I have asked that 21 angels will come to this room and will carry with them that which to your eyes would appear as a bushel basket in the shape of a cornucopia. I have asked that immortal roses from one of the beautiful sylvan glens of Devakan shall be picked and brought here, 21 baskets full. I have asked the angels of faith from my band to charge those roses with the essence of faith in the immortal comfort of Almighty God. I have asked that that faith should penetrate into that substance until a slight tinge of blue should blend with the pink hue and cause to be dispersed violet roses. I have asked that these roses shall be scattered in the air and shall descend passing through your auras to defend the faith within your being. I have asked an extension of the power of seeing for those who are able, that they may gaze into the realms of light and see the Lord's table where the very body of the Christ and the cup of his essence is prepared as solemn communion, a table where the masters and angels do eat and drink of the holy bread, which is called the bread of angels. I have asked that at a given signal, the garlands of flowers surrounding the entire room shall be dropped. I have asked that at that moment that faith and its renewal, the memory of the ancient covenants, the bestowal of compassion shall be given to ye all. I have asked that as in the days when the Christ break the loaves and the fishes, that a dispersal of these 21 baskets shall be made to feed the souls of all in San Francisco who hunger and thirst after righteousness, that they may be filled is my prayer. This messenger was distressed in spirit concerning the fact that the outer attendance was not great. We are not distressed, nor will we permit him to be for we will raise him to a point where his vision too can clearly see that although there be but few, we will feed them the manna of multiplication, multiplying the faith of God within their hearts. It will not only impart to this city divine grace, 
but to the city of God above, the celestial ideal, which will seal and heal the hearts of men of all their disappointments and grief. For I tell you this day that mankind throughout the world are often unfulfilled. They are unfulfilled in their search for happiness, and there is often a vacant spot within them. Let it be filled this day. Let us scatter the seeds of God's love, the seeds of God's faith to the world, and let them feed upon the morsels of faith that as leaven will leaven the lump of identity until identity will no longer be identity, but identity will be communions linked with God and hierarchy. Now let depart the light covenant of the ancient of days. Drop, gentle angels of love and faith, the flowers of space that hallow the law of the ancient of days. And let men once again gaze upon the birds. Remember the link with hierarchy. Remember that as you watch us, so we watch over you. I thank you. sign of the heart and the head and the hand to you. May the peace of your presence abide with you wherever you are, wherever you go. May the glorious peace from your presence flow through days of service and nights of rest. May the peace from your presence keep you blessed. The sign of the heart and the head and the hand to you. May Lord Gautama's cosmic cross of white fire watch between thee and me as we are absent the one from the other and ever present with God.
gracious ladies and gentlemen, with the passing of the years into retrospect, I am mindful of the struggles of humanity and of how the unfolding destiny of men casts upon the screen of the future a projection of their present day acts. The reaper of life, the karmic lords, the law, the manifestation of individualized and collective destiny is brought keenly to the minds of the alert from time to time. And men are able to discern in the happenings of the present moment many of the errors of the past which have stemmed from the fact that they have dwelled in ignorance of the law. To ignore the laws of God may seem to be done with impunity. But I would call to your attention now that this seeming to be is in fact only an act of compassion, mercy upon the mercies of God which have been revealed to mankind and the ascended masters as the record has been opened to us so that we are able to unravel the tangled threads of destiny and see how that out of the outgrowth of past error, all things which now occur are brought into focus as the karmic web spun by mankind brings about the fruition of that which they have sown. Enough then, I say, of the nonsense of the past. For the time has come when men must look to the future with hope because they have projected into that future as into a cosmic bank the deposits of their own energy given in holy dedication to the solemn purposes of life. You would be interested, blessed ones, if you were to see clearly as I do the thoughts of men steeped in the vanity of the ego. Individuals at the court of France long ago thought to deceive me and thought me a charlatan or a pretender. But I fear that I have outlived them and their usefulness. For many of them today who dwelled in positions of grandeur in the outer world of form are presently engaged in sweeping the streets of some of these larger cities. And thus the law coming full circle has exacted from them the very demands that they put upon inferior individuals in their times. I do not mean to imply that there is an injustice in the menial tasks of life or the requirements of those who command. I am simply bringing about a reminder to all of the law come full circle that men may understand how that a compassion flooded forth from their heart to one who may dwell in a lesser set of circumstances than themselves may one day stand them in good stead with the karmic lords. Yet I pray that men will not solely pay consideration unto their brothers because they fear lest some ill destiny befall themselves, but will do so rather from a heart that is charged with the divine light of the Christ. The light of the Christ, gracious ones, is the compassionate light of God that never fails. And when mankind cast aside the dim perceptions that they have of life for the largesse of heart which comes from the Godhead, they will find that the flame intensifies its action within the domain of their being, and the flame becomes a tangible pulsation which floods their being with the joys of cosmic youth. Men often speculated as to what century I passed from the screen of life. Men often speculated concerning my statements which I made to them. For I knew many of the noblemen 
at the court of France, and I loved them with a love beyond their understanding or comprehension. They were fascinated by the allure which I was able to project into that court, which was steeped in glamour and outer world opulence. But gracious ones, they did not understand the message which I sought to convey. They were captured by illusion, as men are to the present day, and it is this shard of illusion that must be stripped from mankind's consciousness in order that he may clearly see the domain of perfection rising within the structure of self. For it is the structure of self to which men must pay heed. God, the grand architect of universal perfection, needs no promptings from the hearts of men in order to guide mankind. He has ever and anon from the very beginning sent forth not a transitory wave, but a permanent wave of cosmic grandeur and nobility. This has gone into the universe and permeates it. Men often go prospecting in mountainous places seeking for gold, yet know not that beneath their feet lie vast, untapped reservoirs of this wonderful shining stuff which mankind seem to treasure so dearly. And truly it is a treasure, but a symbolical one charged with the radiance of the sun and the fire of life. It is charged with no delusion or illusion, but rather with the golden wisdom of Almighty God. You see, gracious ones, the self is a mountain of holy treasure, and within the domain of the self, joy must be brought forth and multiplied. And joy is indeed the motor of life, which when properly understood and harnessed, will cause the regenerative processes within the force field of individuals to amplify the light energy within the cells. Thus, a renewal of the power of eternal youth occurs within the dimension and force field of the individual because God is there and pours out his limitless light even as the sun gives forth her energy. If individuals would understand this, they would be amazed at the possibilities of retarding the aging process. Unfortunately, individuals are always looking about them for what others think and do not seem to be concerned with the flow of their own thoughts into the domain of the world at large. You see, there is a tremendous influence of what you think, precious ones, upon those who are around you. And if one individual within a room is to think, precious ones, in a negative way, the influence of that one individual is a great countermand to the correct and constructive thinking of the many. Thus has come into manifestation your accepted statement that one apple in the barrel can spoil the entire barrel. You then, knowing this law, must recognize the power of God to overcome this within the domain of yourself and you must take dominion over that personal domain because it is your plot of ground and in reality it is God's acre. Be still and know that I am God is an affirmation of great power when rightly used. To still the self and the flow of mortal thoughts is valid. To still the self and its trends of negativity is holy, to guard the entrances to consciousness as though one were guarding a treasure house is the greatest possible assistance to every life stream. Because when an individual understands the necessity of guarding the citadel of their own being, they will pay heed to the need for others to guard the citadel of their being, and thus grace will be multiplied, and courtesy, which stems from the word court, will be multiplied among mankind, even as the sciences are coming now into a greater measure of affluence in the world, and have brought about the renaissance of the ages in a temporal outer way of manifestation. Now then, of what value is all this great culture, this manifestation 
of the wonders of science to the world when the world has gone mad. For the world today has literally gone mad in the midst of all that it has of blessedness. It seeks to destroy that blessedness and to lavish it upon the personal self and upon the ego until the hearts of men are literally quaking and failing for fear and that which you call heart failure is being multiplied among mankind who cannot stand the tireless pace. Understand then that there can be and there is no heart failure where the power of Almighty God as the generative and regenerative flame of life is stabilizing every activity within the domain of the individual person. How can life cease to be? Life simply is, blessed one. And if it is, nothing can put a stop to it. Understand this. Take this into your consciousness. Be quickened by it and recognize that if life is life, it cannot die. It is that simple. Yet mankind have come to accept the lie of the tempter and the idea that consciousness will terminate in an abysmal blackness whereby they will have no consciousness to continue the life round which they came forth on from the heart of God. The life round, the great round, the sesophoric round of existence is a circle vast and grand. And if it were to end, it would be simply in order to begin again. For a straight line may have a beginning and an ending, but in the divine geometry of life, you will perceive clearly that life is circular within its great cosmic sense. And it begins somewhere upon the trajectory of the circle and passes on around to come to the point of its beginning, then to begin once again a new cycle of existence, creating thus a spiral ever rising into the transcendence of infinity. Life is continual, but in order to be continual as God intended it to be and thus progressive, Men must consciously become identified with the mighty currents and life waves which are the valid presentation that God has made to each life stream of a blueprint of being. Do you know that there is a blueprint of being clearly existing in the ethers above yourself? This precious blueprint of being is held within the arms of your holy Christ self. And your holy Christ self constantly, continually, day and night makes meditation and mediation for you to the heart of God, your own individualized mighty I am presence, in order that you may become infused with the God magnificence of that holy blueprint, the original first cause, flown out from the heart of God and intended to be the bird of paradise for each man, the mighty eagle of life that mounts up on strong wings, the holy dove that descends with the effulgence of the white light of the Holy Spirit into the chalice of each man's heart. Life then is indeed, as you have been told again and again in this class, a grand event proceeding in an orderly fashion from the heart of God Life seeks to attract to itself more life. And thus God said in the beginning, it is not good for man to be alone. I will make a help meet for him. Men must understand that the reference can be taken in many ways. Mankind have chosen to consider that this reference is solely the idea of a physical marriage. I call to your attention to night precious ones of the light, that the intent in the divine way as God planned it was more along the lines of the individual becoming wedded to and identified with his mighty divine self and thus in the cosmic priesthood of the order of Melchizedek where continuity of existence is the forte of the great God flame within man. It is understood and revered by those hearts initiated into the Melchizedekian priesthood that the continuity of life is by divine intent and thus it is accepted as it is given. When individuals understand the meaning of the squaring of the circle, they will recognize that the foundation of the temple of individuality is within the framework of the cosmic circle or the cosmic whole. 
and that the squaring of the circle does propound into the world of individual achievement the opportunities which life brings to man's doorstep as the goddess of justice has often commented upon to me. You precious ones of the light are treasures in the mind of God. And as treasures in the mind of God, you came forth in the beginning as immortal, soulful beings, enamored with the creativity of God and desiring to express it. Through misdirection and misadventure, mankind have departed from the original blueprint of Almighty God. And while they have dramatically brought about a world shaped to their own ends. The destiny and plan of the Infinite One has been canceled again and again in a holocaust of destructive activity. Some among you are aware and others are not of the awful action of the Brothers of the Shadow, how that the Brothers of the Shadow are indeed initiates who took to a certain degree the love of God into their heart and then turned against the plans and divine intent, not to the right-hand path, but to the left-hand path of being, where they vampirize the vital energies of mankind and turn them to a nefarious purpose in order to create in a world of order and beauty, chaos and destructivity. Mankind today, lured by the glamour of ego and by the intensified action of mortal greed are constantly pulled down as the sirens of old lured mankind upon the rocks. Then as Samson was shorn of his hair by Delilah, so mankind are stripped of the vital spiritual energies of life which are intended to infuse their being. And thus the brothers of the shadow as Delilah seek to lure mankind to the delights of the senses so mankind become enamored and victims of their own outer world glamour and desire to perpetuate self and person above and beyond the divine intent of cosmic unity. Do you know, precious ones, that there abides in the realm of Divakan, in the heaven world, any number of individuals who have all their life sought to glamorize their name and fame in one embodiment, and they are taken up and caught up in the idea that they can achieve immortality in the eyes of men by having monuments erected to their own name and person. I tell you that the ascended masters have not so done. The ascended masters have sought no continuing monument unto their self, but only the desire to raise a monument to the spirit of life that they might spread abroad compassionate good works to mankind to heal a sick child, to raise the feeble and the aged to a state of more beauty and understanding, to console the hearts of men when they were breathed, to point the way as way showers of light and to bring the power of the spirit to bear as cosmic pressure upon the scientific minds to solve the mysteries of disease and intensify the love of man for man. Humanity is our concern, and the brothers of the light have no desire to spread abroad the teachings that bring about destruction and produce a bearing in men's countenance that smacks of greed and human viciousness. I call now tonight to all of you and to your holy Christ self, to your great winged God self, and to the sandals of light that God has placed upon your feet, to understand clearly now and for all time that as men sow, so shall they reap. The law is not fooled, O gracious ones, nor do we think that it ever can be, for we are certain that the quickening power of the law will ultimately enfold mankind with a power that clearly reveals the truth in the axiom, the mills of the gods grind slowly but exceedingly small. 
You then, as individual monads, at times feel a terrible sense of gnawing separation from one another. And in the lonesomeness of human consciousness, do not understand that the self is in reality the great door. The door to God. The door which I am. I am the way, the truth, and the life is always the self, and if God did not break the body of himself into the crumbs of divine intent, the crumbs of individuality, the sacred Eucharist could not be realized by the many sons which he seeks to bring to captivity, to the captivity of the holy will of God and the gentility of cosmic grace, whereby love is spread abroad in the countenances of men because it is the shining star-like substance that breaks forth in mighty beams from their heart and is that wonderful feeling of pure love which is experienced on rare occasions by mortal men but which is not always understood because when it is taken apart it is destroyed and therefore whereas you cannot analyze it you must understand that you can enjoy it. And joy then the wonderful feeling of pure love when it comes to you. For this is the substance of heaven and it is the wonderful presence of God which each angel manifests within himself as a flaming part of the great cosmic central sun which in man becomes the great central pivotal point around which true life revolves as the reality which I am. The reality which each individual is must be cognized by that individual. For if I and the other ascended masters were to cognize for you individually, it would not work. For we have already cognized for ourselves individually. And we have accepted all that God has intended us to accept. And this has changed and transmuted within our world all that we were into that which we are. This also is the ultimate destiny of each individual. And you see, precious ones, when men sees the affairs of the moment, the way the Father intends it will produce the pure refinement of the alchemical gold within the domain of the individual's world. And what a wondrous change it will wrought is beyond human comprehension. You have heard of the violet flame cape. You have heard of the white ermine. Let me unravel for you now the meaning of that. When the kings of old were clothed in purple raiment, it was the infinite power of the violet flame which they sought through the power of the wise men in their kingdom to convey to themselves, surrounding themselves with a violet flame cape which transmuted on the instant all the negative energy which was sent as hostile arrows from their subjects into the domain of the kingship. The white ermine was significant also of the purity of consciousness which the king, as representative of Almighty God, ought to embody as manifest purity of principle. And the white ermine also was more than that. It was the white fire substance which brought to the consciousness of the king, if he were illumined, the understanding of the need to fill himself, to charge himself with the divine presence. Grace be multiplied unto you this night and comprehension. For lo, I can come. Lo, I can think. Lo, I can say and be, I am. But you individually must within the domain of your own world spark that radiance which you also are. If I tell you tonight that you also share the same body of God that Saint Germain and Jesus and all share, will you accept it? Will you take it into your heart? Will you determine that you are going to manifest these qualities of the ascended masters? Oh, we have spoken to you so many times in this century. We have charged our love into your midst in tangible light rays. We have drawn you very close to our hearts. We have held some of you literally in our arms. And yet there is always 
that lingering doubt in the consciousness of man as to our reality, and we sometimes wonder just what purpose would be served by our stepping through the veil for a very short time after we had physically, tangibly manifested and appeared to you, you would soon be telling yourselves that after all it was only an illusion and could not be a reality. Therefore, it is our hope that the doubting Thomases among you will understand for once and for all that the Ascended Masters are more and more concerned with your externalization of within yourself the light that we have, that we are, that we hold. When this light becomes a personal thing, when it is externalized in the domain of the individual, then we ask ourselves, can they doubt themselves? Do you see? The manifest understanding of this, when it dawns upon your consciousness, ought to spur you to more noble efforts, ought to spur you to a greater comprehension of the law, and ought to produce in this time, by the power of example, the type of individual that will stand out in the world of men as a being of worth, a being dedicated to the magnification of God's light, within the force field of self, through intensification of effort, through intensification of thought, men are able to achieve much. For God himself intently dotes upon the creation which he has formed so beautifully above. Then when men below manifest below as above, that which God dotes upon will become a beautiful thing in the outer world of form. Noble and grand architecture, never before brought forth, will be a thing of reality in this world and within the souls of men and their lives. The nobility of cosmic architecture within the domain of the individual is of more concern to us than beautiful buildings. Yet we know the effect and the influence of beautiful buildings, of beautiful thought forms, of beautiful ideas upon mankind. Today there is a nefarious and awful plot in the world that seeks to spread ugliness in the world through the depicting of horror to mankind and to the youth of the world. Innocent individuals, in the name of a thrill, go forth to be entertained by these vicious pictures which are actually projections from the astral realm of the horror of decadent men in a decadent society of the past. You, when you understand the meaning of the great cosmic law, will shun these things as one would shun an abortion of the cosmic intent. Remember, precious ones, that God never distorts, that God never aborts, that God never destroys. All destructive activity is always the culmination of events brought about by man's own ignorance of the law, by man's own lack of understanding, by man's lack of value, by man's release of misqualified energy into the world of form. When energy is regarded as a treasure, when the release and charge of energy is regarded as a pleasure, when men comprehend and understand how that the life plan of God and man is served wisely by the release of pure energy, you will see a race of men manifest upon this planet that have never before shown forth their light. You recall now, precious ones, the words of my beloved cohort, Jesus. Ye are a city set upon a hill that cannot be hid. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. The cosmic unity of the ascended masters is legion, and our allegiance is to the presence, and our allegiance is to the presence of life within you, and our allegiance is to bring forth here in America a race of men that will govern the earth with the Christ rule with the rod of Iran, with the rod of Aaron, with the rod that budded, with the rod of dominion, dominion over the earth through dominion over self, dominion and control, not to be controlled where ye formed, but to control, to control your own destiny, to mold and shape life, 
to bring forth beauty into the world and to externalize it. The forces of negation may rage, the heathen may imagine a vain thing, but God has released beauty into the world. God has released perfection into the world. God has made things wonderfully and well. God has performed his service of beauty. The rapture of the eternal father was released in the perfect pattern which stands above thee in thy divine presence. Mankind today below are not robots controlled by their presence. They are in many cases controlled by other forces which seek to ride in and to supplant and to usurp the authority of the presence in their world. Understand then the need of bringing down the tube of light around your flesh form. Understand the need of bringing down the resurgent white firelight around your flesh form. Understand then the need of using the violet transmuting flame as you have never used it before. Understand then the need of creating the mental picture of the steely white light of God that never fails. Understand then the need of cutting the ties which bind you to outer world dominion. Understand then the need to awaken and quicken the spark of the divine flame, the holy threefold flame of life within your heart until it rises out of the human dimension and pulsates with the mighty fires of life, the throbbing intensity of the very being of God rising up into attunement with the mighty God presence above you. Understand then how that the Holy Christ self, as it comes down in a mighty tide of energy, will shake the very foundations of the earth and change the outer world pattern from one of discordant energies and energy manifestations to the perfection of the divine presence where the light of God that never fails shines forth with the splendor of the Son of God. And ye are indeed, as of old, called by your right name, by the name of the being of God, the new name which no man knoweth, saving he who has received it. Be free in this day and age, for freedom is the God intent of the age. Freedom is the requirement of the hour. A world in bondage may be a world of flame, but a world of flame is not in bondage. Be a flame then with God intent, and ye shall be free. Be aflame with the world's intensity and the discordant, inharmonious energies of the world and you shall always remain in the bondage of mortal illusion. I ask this night that the mighty lords from Zadkiel's band, the angels of record and those who assist mankind to know their freedom will come into this room 10,000 in number and radiate the intensity of their mighty focuses of violet transmuting flame into the force field of this room. Let this charge of light intensify and intensify and intensify. Let the violet flame magnify, magnify, and magnify by the power of a three times three. Let freedom pulsate through the physical octave of mankind. Let freedom pulsate through the mental octave of mankind. Let freedom pulsate through the emotional octave of mankind. Let freedom pulsate through the memory octave of mankind. And let freedom reign. Long may the banners of freedom reign over the world of every individual here and over all upon this planet whom I love with a love that will not be understood until mankind are ascended themselves in the light and holy God free. Ladies and gentlemen, Children of the dawn, radiant sons of God's love, in the holy name of freedom I say, let freedom star guide you wherever you are to seek until you have found, to search until you know, to refuse error and shun error's child, and understand that love, meek and mild, is the Christ light within that erases all banal sin and shows the purity ray that leads back to the throne of God right now today. I am, I am, I am the freedom of the law. I am, I am, I am the freedom of the light. I am, I am, I am the freedom of the right. Modroit, 
My right, the right of kings, is given to every man. Now I say, let liberty as of old resound, liberty take dominion. I thank you. Number 62, the Marseillaise. Ladies and gentlemen, the service will be closed by honoring St. Germain's request to sing to the Liberty Flame, Sons of Light. Let us honor that request. Mm -hmm. Number 62. Sons of light, away to glory, God's ancients bright now come again to bring to earth perfection story. The plan divine and goal of a man is this fire, so the Christ takes command, and God's great light will banish the shadows that now enfold this planet round. As man the mercies bonds asunder, the bells of freedom will resound. Arise, to God the call for peace and liberty. This truth we know, light is supreme and master over all. God of light, beloved, I am in us. Come now in mercy, set us free. We now invoke in adoration, thy gift the flame of liberty. Within our hearts, let it now take command. Our love to thee, dear Paul, the Venetian, and brothers of thy blessed retreat. The guardians of this mighty focus of God's love flame on earth so sweet. Love's power and wisdom true. These ninety balance true. These now proclaim liberty's flame. The Our concluding benediction, be 7.26, the flame of freedom speaks. At the conclusion of this, we will leave the platform. When we have reached the door, the meeting will be dismissed. The bonds of love and light, returning here on the morrow, according to the program, to continue and conclude this convocation. 7.26. Together, the flame of freedom speaks, the flame of freedom within each heart, the flame of freedom saith unto all, come apart now and be a separate and chosen people, elect unto God, men who have chosen their election well, who have determined to cast their lot in with the immortals. These are they who have set their teeth with determination, who have said, I will never give up. I will never turn back. I will never submit. I will bear the flame of freedom unto my victory. I will bear this flame in honor. I will sustain the glory of life within my nation. I will sustain the glory of life within my being. I will win my ascension. I will forsake all idols, and I will forsake the idol of my outer self. I will have the glory of my immaculate, divinely conceived self manifesting within me. I am freedom and I am determined to be freedom. 
I am the flame of freedom, and I am determined to bear it to all. I am God's freedom, and he is indeed free. I am freed by his power, and his power is supreme. I am fulfilling the purposes of God's kingdom. the unity of life pour forth. The advent of being is a sunburst of reality, yet the magnitude of that moment is lost by mankind, who in the dimness of forgetting lose sight of all that magnificence with which they came into the arena of consciousness and to perceive inform that great divine intent made manifest. I am come, gracious ones, this day to arouse in you by the power of light transcendent the wonderful gift of God which poured forth from the fount of being in the beginning that you might comprehend that in this day of lost causes there is yet the fire of spirit which gave thee birth and will stir within thee the great cosmic empathy for almighty God's divine purposes. The world today seeks in vain for happiness and with each little surge of temporal happiness, there is a twinge of regret, for mankind are well aware of the fact that they have not in actuality touched upon the great surging reality of Almighty God. When 
A moment of cosmic bliss floods the soul. The soul is aware as never before within the framework of individual embodiment that there is a great joy that permeates the universe and that that joy, that tangible reality is within the domain of every man. When men and women touch the borders of that subtle reality, they know that something grand happens to them. They also know that something wonderful will continue to happen to them as they unfold within the recesses of their being the transcendence of God, lifting veil after veil from before the screen of their consciousness until that ultimate moment when they are aware that they stand in the presence of God. Throughout the world, devotees in an endless procession continue to search out and desire to find that magnificence which lies within themselves. They come from the east and the west, from the north and the south, an endless stream of hungry hearts. There are those who come to various ashrams in India and some who, falling upon their knees, are touched by the angelic host right where they are. It does not matter, gracious ones, where mankind seek the great power of God. It matters that there is a finding and a revelation and an unveiling of that divine presence that is always within themselves, yet seen so far. Why is it, gracious ones, that the light that never fails, seems at times to be far from mankind? Could it be that individuals themselves are far in consciousness from God? Could it be that mankind are far from the ascended master's octaves? I think a searching of honest hearts will reveal that man's energies have often gone into a matrix of paltry nothingness, that is to say, they have lavished upon the senses and upon the puny desires of themselves all of the great God energy down through the ages which would have brought them to the feet of that magnificent Christ self if they had only recognized in past times that this were so. Lament it not, lament it not, for in the eyes of God there is no blot irremovable that the compassionate hand of Almighty God cannot sweep from before man's eyes and cause to be transmuted, though it be scarlet, into the white light of God purity, thus raising men to that place where they are welcome at the courts of heaven. Individuals somehow or other have lost sight in this world of form of the invisible realities of life the great God tides that flow forth from the central sun of their being that find anchorage within the threefold flame within their heart. These great tides are ignored and the energy pattern of their world rises from morning until night and then descends into the gloom of the night and is lost upon the senses and sense creation. Now then, how did we, the ascended masters, come to a point where the will of God was made known unto us. It is because of the great faith that we did externalize in every action to heed the admonishments of the deity and to believe as Abraham did in the mighty power of God to remove from our consciousness the pains and pangs of earthly life and to show us that the great light of God could dawn within the chrysalis of the present moment to shatter that moment that is wedded to darkness and to reveal the transcendence of the light bursting within every atom as the power, the power, the power, the germinal creation of the infinite one who seeks to magnify within mankind's consciousness himself that the best gifts might come 
through the freedom of God into manifest creation within the domain of the individual monad dedicated to the purposes of the eternal God. Hear ye now then the life that is bursting within. Open your ears and listen. At the portals of being, the joy of God is rolling forth as a great sea, surging and surging, seeking a borning within the individual's consciousness. Now then to our house in Darjeeling, during the night side of life, when men sleep, comes their souls, pondering admittance to our retreats. And as one of our brothers answers the door and desires to bid that one enter, there is often a timidity on the part of the individual that would be touching to see if it were not so pitifully clear that that one lacks the faith to go through that door, to come into that portal where welcome is always the order of the day and the night. The individual comes in timidity and because of a timorous attitude is turned away not by ourselves but by their own thoughtlessness, by their own lack of courage and by their own disbelief. Hear ye then the great tide of life that is knocking at the door of your consciousness and recognize now that in these perilous hours it is up to each individual to understand that men must recognize within themselves the light that does not fail. What is this light that does not fail? Is it not reality? I say it is the greatest tide of reality that is in existence anywhere in the universe, for it is the doorway to freedom. It is the doorway to understanding. It is the doorway to your God intelligence, and it is the key to your freedom from every single bondage of human creation. Little ones of the light, the hand of the cosmic Christ seeks to feed the hungry of heart and to bring to the awareness of their mind the great love of the infinite one who created all creation as one and out of the oneness of himself did fashion the individual parts sending them forth to gaze upon the portal of their being that they might see within themselves the master key to cosmic unity. It is the unity that you must seek, and it is the unity that will give you your freedom. E pluribus unum, references in the name of Almighty God, blessed ones, the energy of the oneness of God, out of which he fashioned all nations, all races, and all creeds, that they might come to understand the one creed, the one creed of the one life, and the law of the one by which all things were made. For out of the one came forth the many, and the many, as they return to themselves and to their home of light, will perceive in the reflection of the flame of the ancient covenant within themselves that the self-same flame is reflected in all, and therefore there is in reality no separation whatsoever anywhere in the universe except through the veils of conscious illusion which mankind have themselves fashioned and which they cling to as though it were a protective garment when in reality it is nothing but the illusions of their mind and being. Shatter now, then, this substance of human creation and replace it by the light of God that does not fail. For the angelic host are gathered round about this place and the ascended masters in order to remove illusion, not to foster it. And so we take you as you are. You may take us as you wish, but we will take you as you are. You come to us now this day, one and all, filled with certain ideas and concepts, some of which are right and benign, and some of which 
were born in error and are of the substance of darkness. It is necessary that the great cosmic separator of the Holy Spirit shall delineate within your consciousness the way that you should go, and therefore you must comprehend within your heart. If you will recall the statement made concerning Abraham of old that the burning and smoking lamp did pass before the screen of his mind, you will comprehend that there is in the flame and surrounding it the substance of darkness, which is the substance of man's own world, the substance of his own error, the substance that he himself has fashioned in his search, but which is not qualified by the power of the light. And therefore, when it comes into contact with the living flame of the immortal creation of God, it stands to reason, blessed ones, that the smoke of that burning substance will becloud the mind, but it is only a temporary thing. And when the lamp of knowledge is submitted to the great light of God descending from the central sun, it will create within the consciousness of the devotee of light a tremendous understanding which will enable him to seek for transmutation as he has never sought for anything else before. Transmutation is the key to change within your world, and it is the key that sets you free. You may think yourself to be very wise, and you may have an accretion of word knowledge, an accretion of knowledge of the physical sciences, an accretion even of the occult sciences, but it is not within the domain of man's thoughts but it is within the domain of man's freedom that he is able to stand in the presence of his peers, the ascended masters, who seek to raise him to their level that he may share in the cosmic freedom that is the gift of God to every man. We enjoy it, blessed ones, because we have searched for it and found. You will enjoy it in a like manner when you have found in the meantime, and it often is a meantime, precious ones, you must seek to cleanse yourself of all misconceptions and errors by a constant application to the spiritual realm, to the precious holy place of your divine presence. There are men upon this planet who dwell in the tents of darkness, and for them, their ignorance has become an abysm, a great chasm of being into which they fall and they are crushed against the jaws of the rocks and they find that in that realm and abode of darkness there is no compassion except the compassion of their outer self and that is as a gnat beside of the transcendent light of God which comes down and seeks to free mankind that he may be indeed free. Think you, precious ones, and I gladly reduce the volume at your request that you may understand that the power of God is able to come forth in the way of silence or in the way of a loud voice. For God himself has desired to speak to mankind in many ways, and betimes it is desirable to shatter the matrices men have placed round about themselves by the great surging tides of divine energy. And then again we find it desirable to speak in a gentler way that we might apply the ungance of spiritual peace to their hearts and show them that God is master of life, light and love. He removeth the terror from men's minds that prevents them from fastening upon and laying hold upon eternal life. He teaches the way of gentility and peace. He calms the raging sea of energy that is within the domain of being, and he is the Lord of all, whose light would fashion in the family of nations a different world than that which you see, a world where the will of God externalized becomes the magnificence of a father's care for his creation. Today in the world there is a seething torment in the minds of men, for they are often, as you would say it among yourselves, at sixes and sevens, 
not only with one another, but also with themselves. They often are in conflict within the realm of their human self, and they are often in conflict with one another as to which way they should go and to whom they should turn. Mankind today, precious ones, I call to your attention, have within their consciousness a host of stereotyped ideas which are sometimes in brutal conflict with one another and produce in the world a certain confusion which does cause pain and anguish to those who search for truth in the earnestness of their soul. Then, too, there is within the world of form an awful greed that, as a cancer, does eat upon the very souls of men. They think to build barns and to store them with the goods of the world. They think to build houses and inhabit them. They think to live forever in the domain of mortal terror and error. Let us now then call to the attention of the children of the dawn that the radiant aureole of the dawn is the light of the soul as it comes undulating through space and in the travail of a morning, peace in the name of God. I say let there be peace. And in the travail of a borning, mankind are often beset by doubts and fears. And these doubts and fears which surround them come also in the night, not from the divine source, but from the projected level and cesspool of human consciousness, from the misadventures of mankind down through the centuries, whereby they have sought to exercise hypnotic control over one another and to produce all manner of unfortunate illusions. Today, in the great majesty of God, there is in his countenance the strength of character, the strength of peace, the strength of every divine quality to flash forth within the human being's soul the mighty transcendent light that raises man from out the realm of a mere human being to a divine being, where words become no longer labels, but they become things of glory and majesty, where life is translated as Enoch was, and mankind feel the cords that have bound them of their own creation breaking and snapping, and they realize that they are stepping forth as the Christ from the tomb into the radiant resurrection tide that spells newness of life to an age. The old age is dead. It is not God. The old age is dead, and the tide of life moves forward, and in the forward movement, men are caught up, some uprooted and turned topsy-turvy, and others swimming straight. But this tide of life, with all its restlessness, demands and exacts from mankind the fullness of universal law, the fullness of universal love. The admonishment, love ye one another, will and must come within the domain of a golden age where the Christ interpretation of God will manifest within men's hearts. If ye were to come to me in Darjeeling, and I were to sit with ye even in my parlor and before the fire, and our hearts were to rejoice together, and we were to drink a cup of oh, divine cheer and share in our love. I assure you I would tell you the selfsame things of which I have spoken this afternoon. For ye live in a nation of greatness, a nation founded upon ascended master ideals, a nation intended to be a cup of light to mankind, a nation intended to stand upright and to manifest principles of holy liberty. This liberty cannot be unless mankind shall awake from the lethargy of the senses and the immersion of themselves into themselves into the domain of the littleness of their cup. Shatter then that illusion and break it and raise up 
within yourself the Christ image, not as a puny thing of mortal making, but as a divine and beautiful thing of God shaking the soul and causing all the dust to fall upon the ground and be transmuted into gold and men to step forth in the radiant wholeness of the divine flame where there is the light of God that never fails and no moth to flit around that flame and be consumed but only the wonderful flow tide of restless gold that comes forth from the heart of God to create a mold of Christ eternity, the beauty, the wonder, the joy, the rapture, the intensity, the compassion, and the purity of the will of God made known unto each individual as that which he can claim and call my own, my own, my own. Take it, use it, assimilate it, it is the will of God for thee. It is within thee. It is the spark that flashes forth in the dark. It is electrifying. It is rejuvenating. It is joy, the ascended master octave joy. It is purity's ray. It is the light that God has fashioned, and it is a splendid thing. Hear ye then the power of this word. Hear ye then the power of this sword that cuts men free today and for eternity. It is the light out of which ye were made, and all things were fashioned from this light. And it is the Christ joy. It is the power that within him raised him up upon the cross. And upon him men gazed and said, Truly this man was the Son of God. When ye also, in the way of regeneration, can stand in honesty before God, and place thy form and thy identity upon this self-same cross of God manifestation, ye will see the line of your human self merged with the great descending power of the infinite light to shatter and blend in the point of crossing as God identity. Your aspirations of ascension and the horizontal manifestation of that which has been lowered. You will understand the inversion of principle. You will understand how that the inversion of principle makes it possible for you to exchange within the macrocosm and the microcosm certain divine concepts with your human concepts. And you can say, take my human concepts that are now within my horizontal bar and exchange them with the vertical power of the infinite light of God descending. For while mankind aspire, their aspirations are often for their personal salvation, and they desire themselves to be saved to the exclusivity of the rest of the world. Now then, Paul's words, Paulo Veronese, the ascended master Paul, Johanna the third ray, come to mind, and we comprehend that every man must be his brother's keeper that he may bend not only his own soul to the divine shaping, but also his brother by the power of love and not by the power of mere command. For while God has commanded and has also disposed, man has commanded and his commands have been disposed of by God. But I call to your attention today the tide of life the moving tide of life that is within thee is, in reality, thy real self. And all that men have thought they are is but a figment of their imagination, the tracing of the imagery of the not-self upon the recorded substance that will one day, as Akasha, roll up as a scroll and cease to be. Only the reality penned by the hand of God will stand and defend the life principle within the human monad against the destructive elements which they themselves have created within their own world. You have a saying upon this world that goes like this, the trees only grow so high, and the aspirations of men may seek to search the sky, but in vain will they seek to search it, for the span of their life is as an empty moment that is soon spewed of its contents and there is no longer anything within it. 
Only within the eternal values of the eternal now can men stand forever, not only upon the earth, but within the universe as the God flame that comes to you today and always to defend. Ladies and gentlemen, the world is in peril, and the peril trembles as upon the brink of a cup. But ye need have no fear, for the perfect love of your divine being will cast out all fear, all torment, all the emptiness that in man is, and replace it by the victory that man is. I thank you. And in the name of Almighty God, and in the name of the Chohanship of the First Ray, I, El Moria, take my leave of you, calling down from the angels of the First Ray the benediction of the holy will of God. When ye know it, you will recognize it as the power of God to bestow upon yourselves eternal life and eternal victory. I thank you.